Hi guys, in the last part of the video we looked at an example of a carbon-13 NMR spectrum for a molecule. We're now going to do the same with hydrogen NMR, which is also sometimes called proton NMR because the nucleus of this isotope of hydrogen is simply a proton. Just like with the carbon-13 NMR, you're going to be given the data you need in an exam within the data booklet. So you're given all the chemical shifts of particular types of hydrogen attached to other atoms within organic chemicals. We can see that those hydrogens that are attached to things that resemble the environment of TMS occupy the space on the spectrum towards the zero end, whereas those that are very different from the environment in TMS, so here is a hydrogen that is attached to an oxygen as part of a carboxylic acid group, these lie at the far end of the shifts for protons, so that's at about 12 parts per million. The best way to see how to use this is to go through an example. So let's analyse the same example that we used for carbon-13 NMR, but now looking at the hydrogen environments. So how many peaks would this same molecule give if we're looking at hydrogen NMR? Well, the way that we've been given this molecule is skeletal formula. And it's easy to lose track of hydrogens when it's shown this way. So the first step, if you are given something that's skeletal, is to draw it out showing all the hydrogens, which is what we've done here. We've just made sure that every carbon has four bonds to it, and if it's not occupied by another atom shown in the skeletal formula, like the oxygens or the bromine, then it must be surrounded by hydrogens. Now we just need to think about how many environments of hydrogen there are. So an environment is where each of the hydrogens is attached to the same things. So it will see, if we can use that word, the exact same view of the rest of the molecule as all the other hydrogens. So we can see that because these three hydrogens are all attached to the same carbon, these make up one environment. Another environment is made up by these two here, again, all attached to the same carbon. This one hydrogen is in an environment on its own because it's the only one that's attached to this oxygen group as part of the carboxylic acid group. But now these hydrogens here, although attached to different carbons, are part of the same environment. This may be confusing because you think that this hydrogen will see a carbon that has a double bond going up, whereas this one sees one coming down. But in fact, remember that we've just shown the keculate structure of benzene, and a benzene ring, or an aromatic ring, is exactly symmetrical with a delocalized electron structure. So these hydrogens, in fact, both are just one carbon away from where we have our branch, and they see the exact same picture of the molecule if we go round in that direction compared to if we start from the other hydrogen and go round in this direction. They meet exactly the same things. It's in fact because of the symmetry of the molecule around this central line that makes these two hydrogens one environment, so that we'll call that environment number four, and the same goes for these two hydrogens. Because of this line of symmetry, you cannot tell these hydrogens apart, you could just turn the molecule over. We then have one final environment of hydrogen on the bottom here, so we'll call this environment number six. So if we looked to an NMR spectra, we would expect to see six peaks. And given the spectra of the compound above, this is exactly what we see. But we can go a little further and decide which peak is due to which hydrogen environment on the molecule. We'll start with those that have the largest chemical shift. So looking at this peak here, it's between about 11 and 12. We can compare that to our data that we would be given in the data book, and we can see that between 11 and 12 corresponds to a hydrogen is part of a carboxylic acid group. And that's exactly what we have on our molecule as environment number three. So we can easily label this as environment number three. 
Next, we have three peaks around about seven on the chemical shift. So looking back to our data, we can see that round about seven is going to be the aromatic hydrogens, which is what we'd expect because we do in fact have an aromatic ring. So these three peaks correspond to environments four through to six. We'll assign these more individually, which one is four, five and six, in a minute. Finally, we have two peaks that are around about a chemical shift of one, getting on for two. And looking at our data, that is the hydrogens that would be attached to a carbon, which is then attached to more carbon. And this is exactly what we'd expect from environments one and two. These are both in the immediate vicinity surrounding them, just alkyl carbons and hydrogens. So these last two peaks correspond to environment one and two. Now a useful thing about hydrogen NMR, which is different from carbon NMR, is that the area under the peaks tells us about how many hydrogens are in a given environment. The reason this only works for hydrogen and not carbon is because carbon-13 is a much rarer isotope, and so hardly any of the carbon present contributes to the absorption, whereas hydrogen, with one proton in it, makes up most of the hydrogen within a molecule, so we get lots of contribution, and therefore if there's more hydrogen present in an environment, the peak is going to have more area. On a spectra given like this, we could probably see that the area under this peak is about half of the area under these peaks, but sometimes it's not as easy to see this, and we use something called an integration trace. What the integration trace does is effectively track the area under the curve that we're given in the spectra. So we can see that it's a flat line here, which shows that the area isn't changing. And then where we have a peak, we have this jump, which indicates that there's new area under the curve as we're moving from left to right. We're then flat again because there's no new area, and then suddenly there's this bigger jump here showing that we've got even more area. Flat again where we have no new area, and then one final jump at this third peak on this extract from a spectra. The heights of the integration trace lets you see how the area of each of the different peaks compares to each other. So if we measured the height jump in each of these steps, you would see that this one and this one are the same height, and this one is in fact double the height, showing that there's twice as much area under the middle curve. What this means is that if we labelled the environments these correspond to, A, B and C, is that C has twice the amount of hydrogen than either A or B does. So that could mean that both environment A and B have two hydrogens each, in which case C would have four, or it can mean that A and B have three each, in which case C would have six. So we can't actually say anything about how many hydrogens are in each environment. We just know that C has twice as many as A and B. If we look back to our spectra, we can use this extra information about the number of hydrogens to give a little bit more of a precise allocation of which peak corresponds to which environment. So with these two, they have about the same height, and so we can't really tell them apart. But they are taller than the other one, and they're about twice the height, and so will contain twice the area. So this means that within the aromatic ring, these correspond to environments four and five, because these both have two hydrogens in the environments, whereas six only has one. So you would expect six to have half the area, and we now know that the smaller peak is six. The same can be said of environments one and two, where the shorter peak has two thirds of the area of the taller one, because there are only two hydrogens in environment number two, whereas there are three hydrogens in environment number one. So we know the shorter peak is environment number two, and the taller peak is environment number one. So you can see that we've now much more precisely allocated which peak corresponds to which environment. 
We're going to split this video again here, guys, and in the next part, we're going to talk about spin-spin coupling. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.